all right, so jumping into it. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Brendan Hahn, uh, and welcome to the Insider's Guide to Mobile AppSec with the latest OWASP uh, Mobile Application Security Verification Standard, or MASVS. Uh, a little bit about me before we jump into it. Uh, my name is Brendan Hahn. Like I said, uh, I'm the Product Marketing Manager uh, at NowSecure. Uh, and I have experience in web and mobile AppSec with a focus on helping organizations deliver innovative secure applications at scale using DevSecOps. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm a security enthusiast with a passion for development velocity. Uh, and at NowSecure, we're on a mission to save the world from unsafe mobile apps, which is why I'm here today to talk to you about the MASVS. So the MASVS. Uh, is important because mobile uh, apps are driving innovation across industries, right? So between, uh, you know, Allstate doing things like accident claims, AR, VR shopping, delivery innovations and more, mobile apps are delivering new experiences. Uh, and the challenge that comes with that is unpredictable security blockers. So what's gonna block your next release? Uh, for mobile apps, both Google and Apple have created app store requirements. Uh, that can actually block you from uploading your app to the Google Play and Apple App Stores, respectively. Uh, internal security testing and governance requirement and governance requirements can both block your release, um, and that assumes that it's actually a completed application that it's ready for release. Uh, if your features haven't been fully built or you have bugs that you need to fix, uh, both of those can uh, delay your release as well. So. It might be all of the above. Um, so we've talked about how mobile apps present unique challenges, uh, and there are some really scary statistics that come with that fact. Uh, even though mobile now accounts for almost 70% of web traffic, uh, and there was a 90% spike of mobile apps load downloaded due, the, due to the pandemic, 85% uh, of mobile apps fail to pass the OWASP mobile top 10, uh, and 70% of mobile apps leak personally uh, identifiable information uh, that could I, uh, violate GDPR or CCPA. To further drive this point home, uh, if this was a uh, room full of people, I would ask you to raise your hand. Uh, who uses any and or all of the apps uh, on the screen right now? Uh, most people uh, use some, if not all of them, uh, but what's scary is there's very real risk with these apps. So um, all of the apps in the yellow square uh, have known breaches within the past couple of years. Uh, to learn more, um, you can check out some of the free resources that NowSecure has built. Uh, included the including the mobile risk tracker, which shows prevalent mobile app risks by vertical, uh, and the breach tracker, which shows the most up-to-date list of breaches. So um, we've talked about how scary this problem is, uh, and part of it is that there are very unique challenges uh, to mobile app sec and app development. So there are two different mobile operating systems to consider, whether you're building for iOS or Android, uh, you have to think about the different languages, frameworks, libraries. Uh, there are constant updates, unprotected devices. Uh, and at the end of the day, in order to handle these, testing requires physical devices, which makes it harder to test. Uh, and there's sophisticated automation that's needed. Um, but the good news is you can rely on the OWASP NASVS as a way to teach developers what they need to know about security and teach security about what they need to test for. So the mobile attack surface is broad. Uh, attackers can take advantage of the app itself, the hardware it's installed on, the network and cloud services it utilizes, the data center and the app, end, app backend that it actually relies on. All of these are potential avenues for uh, data leakage and attacking. Um, so there are actually five big areas uh, that attackers can take advantage of. Uh, there's the actual code that developers write, that is then uh, that whole code functionality box. Uh, there's data at rest, 
Uh, both of those exist on the physical phone itself. Uh, but once the app is running, you open a whole new can of worms, right? So once the app is running, attackers can also look to capture data in motion from insecure data transportation protocols uh, or abuse API backends to get the user data uh, that's in your application. So uh, it's a very scary problem. How do we solve that? Uh, one of the first steps that NowSecure recommends is reducing your actual attack surface. Uh, so you should be looking to write secure code from the start, protect data in REST and in motion, uh, and inspect your API backends to get visibility into potential insecurities. And we're going to talk more about what mobile app security testing actually entails now uh, and the MISVS, right? So uh, clearly, mobile app security testing is a loaded term. Uh, in, if we start in the middle, App security starts with understanding security requirements, of course. This is where awesome people like the people at the OWASP uh, have created the MASVS, the MSTG, the Mobile Top 10, uh, and some checklists so that you can understand what threats you really need to uh, address in your application. If we then look to the left, uh, mobile has its own really fun, unique set of challenges that we've already talked a little bit about. Uh, like your operating system, coding language, the device it's being run on, and more. Uh, and then to the right, if we think, you know, mobile app security testing, if we think about that testing piece, um, that's really all about understanding the assessment types that you need uh, in order to fully assess your attack surface. So like I said, there's good news here. There's a ton of OWASP mobile security project resources to help learn um these actually came as kind of an evolution so the market started with the mobile top 10 uh, but realized it wasn't quite enough uh the mobile app security verification standards or MISVS, which we're going to talk more about in depth shortly uh came about uh and the testing guide and checklist are other assets that OWASP has produced in order to kind of provide more practical advice uh, on how to really act on the MASVS and the MSTG. So uh, one of the things that the MASVS does is create clear tiers for different types of apps. Uh, if we start in that top left box, MASVS L1 is the minimum security requirement. Uh, it's best for apps that have no compliance or regulatory needs uh, and are more simple applications uh, so for this whole slide, we're going to use example apps in each one of these boxes just to help drive the point home. Um, and they're all going to be from healthcare because healthcare is something that we often think about as needing better security um, or being highly secure. And e both of those are in a, in a way true. Um, but we're going to be talking about different kinds of healthcare and medical apps here. Um, an example of an L1 kind of app, right? So if you're building an app, uh, that's like this, you'll need to achieve at least MASVS L1 security levels. Um, so that'll be something like a WebMD search app. Uh, that app would have no PII or strong intellectual, intellectual property. Uh, so it only requires a certain level of security scrutiny. Um, once you start to get more complex, the security requirements that you need will also uh, get more stringent, right? So if we think about a weight monitoring app, uh, you then have an account, you have PII, you have regulatory and compliance requirements, you may have credit card information if it's a paid app uh, and more, right? If, if you have my name, date of birth, location, where I eat food, all of those kinds of things uh, that requires some more defense in depth and uh, it will require more security than just an L1 level app. Um, on the right side of this diagram, we'll see L1 plus R and L2 plus R. Uh, plus R just means that it's plus reverse engineering resilience, um, which is primarily to protect IP, uh, but also is to prevent tampering, right? So uh, for an L1 plus R app, if we think about uh, a medical formulary app that explains to doctors what medicine to mix, 
and how to make it, that IP really has to be protected because if an attacker were to maliciously modify that application, a doctor could get the wrong recipe for medicine or give the wrong mix of medicine to a patient. Uh, and that could be ineffective or way worse, deadly. Um, so that's L1 plus R. L2 plus R is something that has PII uh, and also needs to protect IP. So a healthcare drug delivery app, for example, will have PII around where someone lives, what their name is, what their credit card information is, and what medicine they take. Uh, this also needs to be protected from, um, from reverse engineering, because if not, then someone can change the medicine being delivered to a customer, uh, and that can also be life-threatening. So <clears throat> big differences, right? Uh, L1 expects basic security, um, and that those best practices be met. L2 requires uh, deeper defense with protection from things like lost device, uh, requiring cert pinning and MFA. Uh, and then anything on the right side uh, has a plus R on it, which means it needs to be hardened uh, and resilient against reverse engineering. The other side of the MASVS is these eight domains. Uh, these are some more detailed requirements uh, that security finding to be mapped to. Uh, and next, we're going to talk about the top five areas that now secure sees uh, as problem areas that you can be focused on uh, to make the biggest impact on your mobile app security program as quickly as possible. Um, it covers, so the eight domains cover everything from architecture and design, uh, data storage and privacy, cryptography, authentication, network communication, environmental, environmental interaction, code quality, uh, and resiliency against reverse engineering. That should sound familiar, um, but those are the full eight. There are some that we see as uh, problems more frequently. Uh, so we're going to talk about those next. So, like I said, where do you start? What are the top five focus areas for the OWASP MASVS? Well, the first is data stored in an insecure location. Uh, the analysis that now secure does of apps publicly available in the mobile app store shows that 50% of apps have insecure data storage, uh, which is a scary statistic. Uh, what that really means is if an application has insecure data storage, uh, an attacker can use the device file system to steal information from the app, uh, whether it's through malware, a stolen device, a malicious charger, uh, anything along those lines. Uh, that app with insecure data storage can lead to identity theft, fraud, uh, any other information stealing. Um, it maps to V2 and V3 of those domains that we talked about earlier. Um, Something that I'm going to pause and take a second to talk about on this slide is there are lots and lots and lots of resources. It's going to come out more at the end of this presentation. Um, but we've linked resources on each one of these pages uh, for if you want to go learn more, these are all linked to resources that you can go learn more at. So those resources are there for you as you embark on tackling data stored in an insecure place. Um, but some tips to start with, right? So uh, from a development perspective, you can avoid writing sensitive data to a device. Uh, if you absolutely have to write something to the device, absolutely encrypt it. Uh, if you're working with Android, definitely use scoped storage uh, and avoid query strings and sensitive data. Uh, from a securities perspective, if you're testing to make sure that data is stored in a secure location, uh, be sure to test the credentials and PII and files. Uh, make sure data is removed when an application is moved to the background uh, and confirm that the required use uh, of a device password uh, is, is in place. So the second area for you to focus on is improperly coded network calls. 48% um, of mobile apps in the public app stores have insecure data communication. Um, what that really means is that almost half of the apps that NowSecure analyzes 
use HTTP instead of HTTPS. Uh, this means that apps are vulnerable to malicious VPN attacks or other network sniffing that occurs uh, and again, can lead to identity theft or fraud. Uh, we've seen instances in the past of attacks that start with finding credentials from insecure network calls in a mobile app. Uh, and then the attackers then pivot into a full-fledged attack with credential stuffing uh, from a more powerful PC, for example. So um, as we talk about mobile apps, uh, it's important to think about the impact that can have on kind of the entire world. Uh, and if you were to get uh, something from a mobile app that you can then reuse elsewhere, uh, that's a very real risk. So to avoid this, be sure to use HTTPS instead of HTTP. Uh, it's, it's a quick fix uh, to change. Um, so highly recommend that. Always generate your TLS session after an evaluation of validation and of the DNS name uh, and perform cert pinning for connections that carry any regulated data. Uh, this is one of the best ways to prevent a man in the middle attack. Uh, and for testing, make sure you test your TLS and cert pinning protocols. The third area of focus from the eight domains of the MASVS is insecure authentication or authorization. So uh, this presentation has not had a lot of good news so far. Uh, we've had scary statistics from the start. Uh, we've talked about people meddling with medicine uh, and all of that scary stuff. So here's some good news for you. Uh, only 14% of mobile apps have insecure authentication. Uh, so if you're looking for an area to focus less on, this is it. Insecure authentication schemes are still dangerous. Uh, they can allow for unauthorized access or theft. Um, but generally speaking, statistically speaking, it seems as though uh, auth insecure authentication is something that's rel relatively under control um, and something that we don't have to worry too, too much about. So if you are uh, really strapped for security capacity, uh, absolutely be sure uh, to focus in on those other areas that we've talked about. Uh, this one is probably okay. Uh, but if you are part of that 14% of apps, uh, there are some scary consequences. If this is something that you embark on uh, and something that you prioritize, uh, here's some tips. Uh, devs should build sessions that time out uh, and clear any memory associated with user data and encryption. Um, both of those are pretty standard. Uh, if you log into something, eventually you'll get logged out if you sit there long enough. Uh, and clearing the cache uh, of memory and you know the user data uh, is, is also key, right? So then security can also test uh, for validation and what data is staying in the memory locally. Um, both of those are uh, clear ways to abuse authentication. So the fourth uh, of five, so we're getting there, uh, is insecure, co insecure coding practices, just more generally. Um, interesting statistic, 47% of mobile apps have insecure exploitable extraneous functionality. Uh, so it's insecure code in the apps that isn't even used by the application. The most common instance of this type of vulnerability that now secure sees uh, is publishing an app with debug features enabled. Uh, this allows attackers to reverse engineer the application to a certain point. Hypothetically, uh, just as a, as a hypothetical exercise of what could actually happen with this, uh, if an online retailer were to publish an application that included the formula uh, that they use internally to generate discount codes, uh, someone could take advantage of that to generate their own really steep discounts. Um, so make sure that if you have um, any of that in your app, you you know turn off your debug flags and all of that before you publish to the app store. Um, 
other things that you can do uh, is ensure your cryptography are meeting your minimum standards. Uh, SHA-3 is the minimum now. Uh, utilize dynamic values and extend your key length. Uh, test to make sure an app is signed with a valid cert uh, and is not a debug build uh, and does not have hard-coded keys built in or coded in to the application itself. So the fifth area uh, is your reverse engineering and anti-tampering. Um, we've talked about this as the plus R, uh, and we've talked about this as one of the domains, uh, but this should be the fifth thing that you focus on the most. Uh, almost a third of the apps available on app stores today have exposure to re reverse engineering. Uh, this means that an attacker could steal data, IP, or get unauthorized access to an app. They can also learn more ways to exploit the application once it is reverse engineered, um, as they have kind of full reign over the app at that point. So how to harden your app against reverse engineering? Um, be sure to use third-party code obfuscation tools specifically for Android apps. iOS uh, has a little bit more security built in, um, but certainly focus on this for both operating systems. Um, Android also has the safety net API, uh, which you can use to check for device tampering. And then when testing, make sure you look for reversibility uh, via JB root. Uh, debugger and data or file manipulation. Just a note on tamper proofing. Uh, so tamper proofing helps, but only so much. Uh, it won't fix security bugs in production, um, but it can help keep your app safe. Uh, for example, if you have insecure network connections, tamper proofing will not protect your app from those attacks. Uh, but it will help protect your app from reverse engineering. Um, so it's a way to uh, keep the good guys honest, uh, but not necessarily stop the bad ones. So some key takeaways. Uh, I've been talking for a little bit uh, and wanted to do some key takeaways here. Uh, what can you go do? Uh, first is to recognize and understand that mobile app and web apps are very different. They have very unique challenges uh, and they, you know, face different uh, threat landscapes. There's a lot there. Um, get to know the OWASP mobile project more uh, and start exploring. There are a ton, a ton, a ton of resources on the MASVS uh, and other mobile projects that OWASP has presented. Um, and just look around there are there's a lot of resources on this um you can also build your skills uh and toolkit with free tools publicly available open source tools um that will help sharpen your skills when it comes to uh, either writing secure mobile apps uh if you're on the coding side or secure uh, testing the security of your mobile apps if you're on the security side um there are uh, eight requirements to help break down this problem, those, those eight domains that we talked about. Uh, and you can start with the big five that we talked about today. Uh, you can even narrow down to three uh, if you really need to. And then um, the other kind of thing that I'll say here, the other plug that I'll have here, uh, is that the OWASP mobile project is open source. Uh, so get involved. It's an open source project. Um, so you can absolutely be, be an asset to, to help. Um, there's some bonus uh, content here uh, at the end of this presentation uh, talking about Cyclone DX. So uh, the Cyclone DX has its own session here at Global AppSec. I actually think it's happening right now, um, but wanted to cover it off on it quickly. It's the new flagship project at OWASP, uh, and it's the new industry standard for SBOM interoper uh, interoperability, hard word to say. Um, basically, uh, in case you're unaware, 
SBOM is a software bill of materials. Uh, a software bill of materials is an extensive list of all of the components inside of your application. Uh, if you think about it in terms of recipe or, or something along those lines, it's all of the um, all of the ingredients in your recipe, all of the components in your application. Think about those the same way. Um, and Cyclone DX is an industry standard format uh, that's machine readable that allows for organizations to get greater visibility into the components of their application kind of across their app portfolio. Um, so that's Cyclone DX. Uh, now Secure firmly believes uh, that everyone should have that visibility into their, their components. Um, we think that every organization should have that visibility. Uh, so you can get some for free. Uh, they won't be in Cyclone DX format, but you can understand what, um, what components are in your app today for free. And uh, as promised, I talked a lot about further learning resources. Um, there's a lot. So we will talk about those now. Uh, if you're trying to build your own mobile app security tools or program, there are a ton of open source testing resources and tools available. Uh, there's the MASVS, which is what this presentation was about. Uh, there's the MSTG uh, repo. Uh, Hacking Playgrounds, uh, Frida and Radare are both uh, publicly available uh, tools. One is the Frida is a dynamic instrumentation toolkit, uh, and Radare is a portable reverse engineering framework. Um, both of those are free and publicly available. Uh, you can also utilize uh, Burp Suite or uh, the Z Attack Proxy, which also comes from OWASP. Um, if you've already built something and are looking to automate testing and scale, uh, like I said, there's the free mobile SBOM uh, and security report that you can get from Now Secure. Uh, we also have a workstation toolkit and a platform that you can use to automate. Um, so there are even more resources. Um, so if you are looking for free training, Now Secure uh, has Now Secure Academy, uh, which is a completely free resource that you can use to learn more about mobile security and development. Uh, and we also have Now Secure Connect coming up next week, next week, which has a ton of content around mobile security testing. Um, I've actually already mentioned both of these reports that you can get, um, but we also have more free resources for you. Uh, the manager's guide to a WASP mobile security project is essentially the spark notes of the MASVS and MSTG. Uh, if you're looking to learn about it very quickly, uh, that is a good place to start. Um, there's also this top five mobile app security issues document that we've created. Um, it's going to cover the top five that we talked about today. Uh, so if you have questions, if you need more information, um, if you want to share this out, absolutely do so. Uh, and then the other uh, thing that I'll plug on this slide is that our R2 community also released an Android Crack Me. Um, so that is a good way to practice uh, and understand how mobile app security actually plays out. Uh, and if you're looking to learn more, Now Secure has a ton of options. We have a resource for you. We are here as a resource for you on your mobile app sec journey. Uh, so with that, I'm a little bit over the...